Hello guys, uh, beautiful evening everyone. Welcome back to another power packed, you know, just like Pastor said, another power packed webinar. You know, this one is special and uh, it's really, really important to me. So, welcome on board everyone. Uh, I'm glad to have you guys here. I think there was a little glitch with the network, but we are back and we're live right here for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me turn that down. So today we are doing business of photography. I'm just trying to stall a bit so we can wait for some of our participants to join us. But today, trust me, it's going to be mind-blowing. Eh? What I prepared for you guys is something you guys should pay me 500k for. <laughs> you know, you should pay me a lot for this. But it's coming for free because I know if you can apply the things I'm going to teach you in the next 30 to 45 minutes, I'm confident that your business will grow. It's, it's just automatic like that. Because uh, I feel like a lot of creatives have not been treating their business like a business. You know, we've just been treating it like a passion, you know, like a hobby. You know, we've not been handling it like an actual business and it has to stop. So that's what this webinar is going to be covering. Okay. So some people are saying they are not getting the sound. I hope you are getting it now. Because it's working perfectly from here. Someone is saying no audio. Hold on a second. Let me. Hello? It's working. It's working fine. Please, if you can hear me, please signify. Please signify if you can hear me before we get going. I need to be sure you can all hear me clearly. I want to be sure you can all hear me clearly. Okay. Okay, they said the sound is okay. They can hear me clearly. Okay. So for people that can't hear me, probably it's from your end. Uh, try to check your sound. Probably your volume is too low. Okay. So, um, like I said, we are doing business of photography today. And uh, I'll be sharing very, very, very important steps. You know, in very critical and crucial steps that will help you you know transform your business you know we are focusing on business today you know and um i'm going to start in a second in like 30 seconds I'll, I'll start i'm just trying to wait for the rest of the people to join us because we started late due to network you know so that everybody can be a part of what i'm going to teach you know so as we proceed i'll start by saying thank you guys for people that have purchased my course i hope you've learned a lot for those of you that have not purchased it yet, please don't hesitate to purchase the course. It's called Art of Illumination. It's a lighting course. You know, and for people that have watched the course, the testimony has been amazing, you know. The ratings is super high, almost 5. It's like 4.8, I think, that we are in the rating. And that's very positive. That's like 98% rating, you know. It's so positive. A lot of people have been messaging us, you know, saying how much they've learned, you know, how much the course has helped their photography. Because I like I used to say, photography is light. So lighting is very important. And a lot of people have been saying beautiful things. Even for people that have bought our presets, our lots, you know, I'm so excited because... Uh, uh, a lot of people have been learning. So thank you for people that have bought it. And people that have not bought the course, please go and do it now so you can start improving yourself now. It's very affordable. I think it's just 30,000 Naira. So please, don't hesitate to buy yours. You know, don't hesitate to buy yours. So let's get going. Business of photography. So as I carry on, please get a pen. Or if you have a tab or notepad or whatever thing you used to write, it's important that you write things down. I'm not showing you any screen, so I'm just giving you those steps. And for you to remember, it's very, very important that you write it down. You can't remember everything, believe me. So get a pen and a paper or a book or whatever thing to be note down what I'll be teaching you in this uh in this session. In this session. So let's go. You know, so a uh, few days ago, I was speaking at Wed Expo. That's Wedding Expo here in Lagos. And one of the questions they asked me in the, during the panel session was, why is it that photographers don't deliver jobs? I want to start here. You know, they asked me, why is it that photographers don't deliver jobs? Why is it that uh, everybody complains that photographers don't deliver jobs? You know, it's like, a, it's like a disease all over the place. Like photographers, they always disappoint. They do the job, they do it well, the picture comes out nice, but they won't deliver on time. You would have to chase them, you know, before you get your photos and all that stuff. You know? 
and and I I I said to myself that the reason is because a lot of photographers don't know how to run business. You know, a lot of photographers don't understand that business is different from skill. You know, business is different from talent. Business is different from passion. You know, that's why when you see all these music artists, you see all these uh, actors and all that in the showbiz, they all have managers. They have uh, companies. They have management companies that manage them. How do you think the likes of Bonner Boy, David Do, and the likes are big today? It's not just because of their music. It's because of the business of their music. The deals they sign. The endorsement they get. The way they structure their business. They have lawyers. They have accountants. They have managers. They have operations. They have production. They have everything that makes up a business. So it's not just David Do that is just running all over the place singing without any business or brand that is working behind the scene. I've, I found out that a lot of photographers focus only on what is in front, like your Instagram page, your beautiful pictures, uh, your portfolio. That's like your priority. The other things that makes the equation complete, we neglect it. That's what I said at the panel session. That the reason a lot of photographers don't deliver jobs on time is because they don't have a business. <laughs> they just have photography. They are just using photography as, a, as a also. It's like also. It's not a business. They don't run it like a business. So there's no system in place to make clients happy. They don't have policies. They don't have marketing plans. They don't have strategies. You know, they don't have structure. Everything is just all about them. And as a result, everything becomes confusing, especially in times where you do so many jobs. You find that you cannot deliver. You cannot meet up with time and all that stuff. You know, and I want to start there. So in this session, I'm going to give you guys the practical stuff on how to build a business, how to brand a business, and how to promote a business. You know, how to build a business, how to brand a business, and how to promote a business. I'm, I can see some people are still talking about sound. I, I, I hope uh, it's working fine now. I really do hope it's working fine now because my, my, my sound is speaking properly from this end. You know, my sound is speaking properly from this end. So if you are knowing anything, please take up your volume or something. You know? So, um, okay. So let's carry on. So I'm going to start now by telling you the first, the first uh, step when it comes to building a business, especially as a photographer or as a creative. You know, the first step that you need to follow is to figure out your target market. Now, I'm going to be very practical and I'm going to be giving you guys real tips. So I want you guys to listen to me attentively. You know, be attentive. Don't say, I've heard this before, target market and all that and you go. But well, if you really want to learn, just listen. Now, you need to figure out your target market. Why am I starting with target market? I'm starting with target market because your target market is your foundation. It is what will determine how your business will run. Believe me, it is what will determine the model of your business, your marketing strategies, you, how, who you talk to, how you promote, how you develop, how you serve the client. Your target market is the foundation. I found that a, a lot of photographers don't have target market. We don't even know who we are chasing. We don't have a dream customer. We don't know, okay, this, this type of people I want, to, I want to be my customer. We just run the business and just wait for rich people. We just want rich people. Everybody wants rich people. It's like it, everybody just want, ah, I want to, this guy serves rich clients. That's why it's better. The ones that serve low-level clients, is not better. You know, we don't even have a focus. That, okay, what kind of clients do I want to serve? When you figure out the type of clients that you want to serve, is that is where you will start designing your business from. I want you guys to go back to the drawing board tonight after this session and say, what is my target market? When it comes to target market, we have three major levels. We have the luxury the high end let me call it high end level you know the high end level we have the middle class level and we have the low class level that's like the three major structures to target market the high end the middle class and the low class now any class you choose to follow trust me guys there's money there in fact a lot of money so it is not about the class don't let anybody deceive you and tell you that it is only the people that serve the high end clients that are making money the people that are serving the middle class or the low class are not making money. Trust me, you are very wrong. If you have that school of thought, change it now. I'm telling you now for a fact that if you are serving any class, you can make as much money 
I know people that are serving the lowest of the lowest of the lowest class. And they are making more money than the people that are serving the highest of the highest. Believe me. So, you, have to, you, are, you just have to figure out your, your part yourself. When I say part, I mean P-A-T-H. You have to f- figure out your direction, your journey. Who are the type of people that I want to serve? That's where you need to start. You know? Who are the type of people that I want to serve? Then, you will now model your business around that. For example, if, for example, you want to serve the high-end level people, the truth is, one of the major marketing structures to serving the high-end people is networking. You cannot just sit on Instagram and think, wealthy people that can pay you 2 million, 3 million, we, we come to you at, on Instagram. I'm not trying to say you cannot get those jobs on Instagram. No. What I'm saying is that for you to get those jobs consistently, you need to network more. That's one of the major marketing structures for the high-end level. The middle class level, you might not need to network as much. Yes, a little bit. But you might not need to network as much. You know, you can leverage on social media. You know, then we have the low class level. Now, these three levels, like I said, they are super lucrative. They are, these are levels that you can make money off from. But you have to figure out who you want to serve. Now, let me give it to you in, on a statistic basis. You know, the lower class level, you have a lot of crowd there. You know, the, for the lower class, you have a lot of crowd. Like, a lot of people are in the lower class. People that cannot afford much for their weddings or for their photo shoot or for photography services. People that book photographers based on necessity. When I say necessity, I mean people that book photographers because, okay, I'm getting married. I have to take picture. They don't have a choice. If they have a choice, they will not even take picture because they cannot afford it much. It's not a necessity. It's not a big deal for them. You know, it's not a big deal for them. Those, that's the lower class. But there's a lot of people in that circle. For example, people that take passport photograph, they are in the low level. Passport photograph is a necessity. Wedding pictures too is a necessity. You know, because everybody wants pictures of their wedding day. They might not be able to afford the high end, but at least every average person wants pictures from their wedding day. So that's the low level. Low level is usually cheap, affordable. You don't need to present anything special to them. Just go do whatever it takes, you know, get jobs. This is the kind of just where you do where you deal with volume. When I say volume, you can book a lot of weddings simultaneously because you are serving a huge crowd of people. You know, that's the low level. You know, I know someone in my area where I live that started his photo studio in a flat just around my area where I live. You know, he started in a flat a few years ago. And as I speak to you now, in the same building, he's using three different flats for studio. And apart from those three different flats, he has another, he started printing also in another building entirely. You know, he has evolved, he has grown. There's someone I know in Akure that used to shoot parents. It's very cheap. He focuses on low level. He doesn't even shoot couples. He just used to shoot parents. Very affordable. This guy has built, I think, three houses. These people are serving the low level, but they deal with volume. So you have to understand that if you want to serve the low level clients, you need to do a lot of volume. You know? What would take somebody that charges, for example, 300,000? The person might need four weddings to eat 1.2 million in a certain period. You that charges hundred thousand, you might not do four weddings. You might need maybe eight weddings or twelve weddings to achieve the same target that the person has achieved. But don't forget that your own industry at the low level, there's more crowd than the one at the middle level. High level, for example, the luxury level, there's not much crowd there. In fact, very few. They call them the one percent, like they say. You know, the low level is usually usually takes up to like seventy percent of statistics. The middle level is around maybe twenty five to thirty percent. Then the high level is like let's say one to two percent, very minimal. You know, so this is the level where only one job can cover for ten jobs. But don't get it wrong and say people that serve high end level are the successful ones. The people that serve the low end level are still struggling. Please don't have that mindset. If you want to make money from business, believe me. Don't be so bent. I'm not trying to say you should not charge your level, but just make up your mind and say, okay, who do I want to chase? Do I want high end? Do I want middle end? Do I want low end? But everything is end, end, end. <laughs> you know, there's nothing like this one is better than the other one. No, you have to just figure out your market. You know, like the marketing you do for the low level is different. You know, if you want to market for the low level, you can market in your environs. You can do banners in your area. You can start a photo studio in your area. You can do use your church or your any association that you're a part of in your area. You can also use social media, do sponsor that, do whatever it takes, and make sure your pricing is very friendly, very cheap, very affordable. The cheaper, the better. You know, a lot of people book you, and you know, you just have plenty jobs. You have a team that shoots for you, and you're just making your money. That's low level. You know, high end level. Those ones love 
exclusivity. They don't like crowd. So they don't want that they book you, you don't show up, you send someone to go shoot for you. They don't like to operate that way. High end level people want to deal with you directly and you give them your best service. You know? So the approach is different. So you have to make up your mind on who you want to chase. For people saying, I want to chase all levels, I don't advise you do that. You can only do that when you have gotten to a certain level in your business. Like for me, in my business now, I, I, I serve the high-end clients, but I have a brand that serves the middle-end. But I don't take those pictures. It is my team that handles that. They serve the middle-end while I focus on the high-end. But I just started that because my business has grown to that level. But if you are just starting off, focus on one level and put all your might and power and strength in it. There's no area you cannot make money. I know photographers that charge as low as 150000 and they are building houses. Let's even go back to other professions like Omoibos that sell clothes. Some even sell food stuff. And they are building houses. How are they doing it? That's to tell you that it's not about the amount of money you make. It's about the volume. If one photographer charges one million for one wedding and another photographer charges 500,000 and if one that charges 500,000 is able to book two weddings on that same Saturday, it's the same one million. You know? So it's all the same. So don't get it twisted. So focus your target market. The moment you figure out your target market, you now start to design a business model around it. You know? And the next thing, your business name must be registered. I, I don't want to dwell on this. I'm sure you guys know that already. You have, you have to register your business name. A lot of you just have Instagram pages. You just put one name there. You, it's not registered. You don't even know if it exists or not. I've been there. My business was not Red Magic at the beginning. My business was Dreamline. You know, after like a year, I now said, let me even research this thing. Then I've not registered it. I found out that it was existing. That's when I started thinking of a new name. So it was a long time ago, though. I've not even started photography. I was still a graphic designer. So just to tell you that you need to register your business. If you can't even afford to register it as a company, at least register it as a business name. Quite affordable. I think 25000 here in Nigeria, or if not less, you know, to register a business. So it's important that you register your business. There's no need to dwell on that much. Now, let's talk about branding. I want to touch on this point as fast as I can. Let's talk about branding. Now, branding is... I'm going to be very direct when it comes to photography, so I won't stress you with too much jargons. Branding is divided into two ways. This is my own analogy of branding for you. I'm going to divide branding into two. We have personal branding and we have business branding. We have personal branding and we have business branding. Personal branding is a branding that, that revolves around an individual. Business branding is uh, a kind of branding that revolves around a team. This is my own definition. It's not in any textbook. <laughs> you know. So business branding is, is the branding that revolves around a team, while personal branding revolves around an individual. Now, you have to decide the type of brand you want to build. You have to make up your mind. Don't confuse people. These, are, these things I'm telling you, I'm telling you based on the mistakes that I have made in the past in my own business. Believe me. The mistake I've made in the past in my own business, that's what I'm using to teach you these things. Personal branding is about you. If you say, okay, you want to do a personal brand, a perfect example of people that do personal branding that are doing it amazingly well is George Okoro, is um, David Martins, Bedge, Bedge Pictures. Um, I think those are the three names I can remember right now. You know, these guys do personal, Emmanuel Eleke. You know, these people have personal brands that you are, when you visit their page, their portfolio, you already know who they are. They don't hide their face. They talk a lot about their self. They put themselves out there. People see them a lot, you know, in occasions. They go out, they dress well, they present themselves, you know, they make themselves the figure of the business. You know, they make themselves the figure of the business. That's personal brand. You know, so when you are doing personal brand, you have to make sure you don't hide. A lot of photographers can be timid, but personal branding is the best branding you can ever do if you want to grow as a photographer. Because when you are a photographer, you are selling an experience, you are selling art. And there's nothing as beautiful as when people know that, okay, this is the guy behind the art. So people tend to connect more with brands that have personal face. If a brand does not have a face, it's very hard. That's why you even see um, financial institutions telling you, uh, chat, chat with um, Dockers, chat with Elizabeth. That Elizabeth is not even a real human being. But they just want to personalize it so that it will be like you are talking to someone, a real person. You know, so it's people love to connect to individuals. So personal branding is the best. But business branding is also amazing. Business branding, like I said, is a type of branding that revolves around a team. So that means you have photographers that work with you. Probably you outsource or you have people you employ. But when you book jobs, nobody knows who is who. 
you just have a customer service the person talks to the customer and when they book your brand they just book you anybody can show up anybody can show up it's none of the client's business just show up and do the job so you can show yourself you can send someone whatever it takes as long as you get the job so business branding is good when you're dealing with the low level clients when you're dealing with the low end market you know when you're dealing with the low end market where you want plenty jobs i don't think personal brand is advisable personal brand uh, low, uh, business brand is profit because y- you can book five weddings in one day book three weddings in one day you know at a cheap rate and you have to get people to send them out to shoot it on your behalf and you know you supervise and you bo- shoot bulk work and you make a lot of money but if you want to target the high end personal branding is my best bet for you because high end people they want to see who they are dealing with they don't want to just be they want to know who you are doesn't mean you should not have a structure because you have a personal brand. Doesn't mean you should not have customer service. You should not have an accountant or whatever it takes to make a bu- that makes a business. No, but they have to see the face of the brand. The high end people do want to know who is behind the brand. They want to see. You have to put a face to it if you want to target the high end. That's where personal branding comes in. You know. Okay, for people saying I should remove the information on the screen, <laughs> I can't do that too. You know, it's the camera and I'm not even, there's no time to do that. So let's just, just flow with me. Flow with me. Okay. Okay. So I think the challenge is this thing is still on photo mode. I don't think you switch to video mode. Uh, anyway, let's carry on. So I didn't even know it was showing. But anyway, let's go. Let's go. So now after branding, one other thing that you need is organizational structure. Now, when it comes to organizational organizational structure, Please, you have to understand that your business is different from your talent. Too. Your business is different from your skill. So when you are doing photography, don't think photography is all about you. The mistake a lot of us photographers make is that we do customer service. We talk to clients. We send email. We send invoice. We do follow-ups. We shoot the wedding. We edit the pictures. We design the album. We, go, we take the album to print. We follow up with people that are owing us. You know, we do marketing. We do promotions. We run the whole business alone. And trust me, business cannot grow that way. I understand that there's always a face, a, a certain level of, or a point you get to your business that you have to handle things on your own. You know? I've been there, all of us are there, so it's fine. I'm not trying to say it's wrong, but you have to be thinking structure. When you start thinking structure, it helps you develop it, even though you don't have the money to employ people. You know, even though you don't have the money to employ people to work for you, you design your business around the structure. You know? You design your business around the structure. So, 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 so what, what I mean is, you need to have a production department, for example. You need to have a production department. You need to have customer service and sales. You need to have marketing department. You know, production department, customer service, you need to have marketing and sales. These are like the three major departments that I think you need. The other ones are just extras, you know. Production department, customer service, marketing and sales. The other ones that I can add is maybe like accounting, like legal. But as a photographer, you don't need to employ a lawyer. You can just get someone that is a legal practitioner to just help you design one or two contracts. In fact, these days, you can even get contracts online. You know, I'm going to even be releasing a contract template soon for you guys. You know, so when it comes to legal and accounting, you don't need to employ people for that. But when it comes to your production department, your marketing department, your um, customer service and sales, these three areas are very important. You know, what I found out is a lot of photographers don't, um, they don't, plan for marketing they don't plan for production they just collect jobs some of you will collect jobs for example a client books you for a job and you get the job and you just spend the money <laughs> a lot of you guys do it and, and you you know yourself you just collect the job you don't even plan let's say for example the job cost two hundred thousand naira the client pays you a deposit of maybe half hundred thousand or eighty thousand naira you just take the money boom you just squander it you say okay yeah, i'm still waiting for another 120 so I'll use that to figure out what next for the job. You are getting all wrong. You are not running your brand like a business. You are running it as if it's about you. And it's not about you. You are supposed to develop your business in a way that it will be existing outside you. So you have to be setting out budget for everything. When a client pays you for a service or when you get money for a service, you have to delegate the money. You have to spread it out. First of all, you have to set aside money for your marketing. 
a lot of you just post pictures on instagram and that is all that is the only marketing you do and you just wait for holy spirit to take over you don't invest in marketing you don't spend money on marketing you don't have to have one million to spend on marketing so when i say invest in marketing even if it's ten thousand naira, even if it's five thousand naira. No, I have a friend that I spoke with a few days ago that spent just, I think, 25,000 era on sponsored ad for five days. And he reached a lot of people and he was able to book jobs. Believe me, you need to spend money on marketing. Some of you have just maybe like 500 followers on your Instagram, even less, 800 followers, 1,000 followers, and you are not doing sponsored ad. You seem to forget that sponsored ad will take your work outside just your followers to a larger audience. Because you don't want to spend money on marketing. You don't want to invest. And people that do sponsor that don't think they are spending a mi millions. People are spending 10,000, as low as 10,000, as low as 15,000. Believe me, on sponsor that, as low as 20,000. And they are reaching people that are not their followers. And they are able to book jobs. They are, they are able to gain more followers. So you need to invest in marketing. You have to take your marketing seriously, guys. Don't just think marketing is about posting on Instagram. All of us do it. I was there too. I would just post on Instagram and just wait on the Lord. No, you can't approach your business that way. You have to be thinking investment. Invest in marketing. Invest. You have to put your money and say, okay, this job, oh, this is what I made from this business. Okay, this 3% of this income goes to marketing or 5% of this income goes to marketing. The best way you can market, of course, is to leverage social media. Social media is the best way. Just put money, do Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, different type of ads that you can spend your money on. You know, if you have your the money to be able to pay for wedding blogs, pay. There's nothing wrong with that. You need to you need more eyes to see your business. And you have to get those eyes. You cannot just sit down and be waiting for your Instagram to blow up before you see customer. You need to take what you have and take it out there for people to see. And how do you take it out there for people to see? You need to sponsor, you need to put it out there, you need to post it on different pages, you need to send your work to blogs. A lot of you don't send your pictures to blog. You have a nice wedding you shot and the picture come out where you just post it on your page and you move on. And your page, you don't even have up to 1,000 followers there or 500 followers. So it's only 500 followers that will see your post and you're okay with that. No. You understand? So you need to put it out there. You know, post it on blogs, send it to blogs, tag people, you know, tell people to repost. Whatever thing you have to do to push your work out there to, so that people that are not your followers will also see that is what you have to do guys so invest in marketing the number two production department production department makes up of photographer and editor and album designer don't forget at a stage of your business you can be the photographer you can be the editor you can be the album designer there's no crime in that if you don't have the money to afford employing or outsourcing it to someone but you have to understand that okay this is a department because when you start thinking structure you will be developing your brand so when you start making more money you'll be able to put the money back into the business because you know what to do with your business i don't know if you guys understand me so your production department makes up your the photographer the editor album designer you know people that do the editing you know me i have a production department here in my office you know people that edit for me people that edit videos people that edit photo you know that take photos in the studio that even shoot events that work on that Red Magic as a brand. You understand? So, while I grew to where I am, I did not just start my business that way. So, I understand that there will be a phase in your business where you might not be able to bring in outsiders to work for you. But if it's still only you, but you, you have to treat it like it's more than you. So, you tell yourself that, okay, me, I'm working in production department. Oh, I am in charge of production department. You are the CEO. You are the owner of the business. Oh, but still, you'll be like, okay, me, I'm working in production department. Uh, I, 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 I'm in charge of photography and editing. Okay, I need a marketing department. Okay, you are still the one that is running marketing department, but you separate it. The moment you separate it, you can budget for it. So, you will not just make money. Like, for example, you make money. You just carry all the money. You just go and buy lens and camera. And because you bought lens and camera, you think clients will just automatically show up to your business. No. It's not run that way. Clients will not just automatically show up to your business because you bought a new camera. I remember when I started investing in important gears, in big gears, I used to have that school of thought. I used to have that mindset too. You know, for people talking about my battery, don't worry about that. I'm here, I'm not going anywhere. You know, so I, I used to talk about my business a lot. No, it's still fine. We're fine. Okay. You know, I talk about my sorry, let me go back. So, when I started investing in high end gears, I used to think the moment I buy those gears, customers will start coming. You know, customers will just show up, everything will just be rosy. Ah, this guy's using high end camera. It's a big lie. The only way you can get customers 
is by investing in marketing. So when you have an organizational structure, you have marketing department, you know that, okay, so so, so percentage of my income goes to marketing department. So let me make it practical. Let's take, for example, you make 300,000 in the last three months. Or let me increase it. You make 500,000 in the last three months. And the 500,000 is enough for you to buy the lens that you want to buy. Don't buy the lens. Here is what I mean. You have other departments to serve. So let's assume you have 500,000. You say, okay, 10% of this money is supposed to go to marketing. You take 50,000, put it in your marketing department, your marketing budget. You take 20,000, put it in your production or, pro or whatever other thing you need to spend money on. You are left with 400,000. You keep the 400,000 for another one month or two. When you are able to make more money, video is down, video is down, video is down. Okay, I can see it, guys. Coming up, coming back up in a second. Coming back up in a second, guys. Okay, so we are back now. Yeah, we're back. So I, I, I believe you guys can see me now. So let me carry on. Okay. So like I said... So when you have the um you, you have the five hundred key budget, instead of spending it on that lens that you've dreamt of buying, you really want to buy, you know, uh you and you need to put fifty thousand in your marketing budget for the month or for the quarter, depending. You have to put that marketing budget where it's because that is what will bring your customers. It's not the lens that you want to buy that will bring your customers, guys. You know, it's not the lens. So you say, okay, instead of spending all these 5000 on only gear, let me put the 5% I'm supposed to put in marketing and whatever. Maybe I want to pay my album designer this uh, 2%. You pay to your album designer, whatever thing you need to spend money on in your business or rent or light or power, whatever. You know, you pay that money there. You are left with maybe 400 or 350 You keep it. That means your business is still running because marketing is going on. It's not like you just shut down your business because you want to buy a lens. And the moment you buy a lens, you now sit down and wait for, you now increase your price. You know, I, this is a mistake a lot of photographers make. Ah, now I'm using expensive camera. Let me increase my price. Because clients will not want to book you. They will not say, why are you expensive? You will not tell them that, ah, it's because I have expensive equipment. That's not how to get clients. How to get clients is to market to them. So your marketing is going on. You wait a bit longer for your lens. You wait another two or three months. When you're able to raise, more, make more money, you add to your production budget, which is like your gear budget. You now eat that 500000 Then you go ahead and buy the lens or whatever equipment you want to buy, camera or system or whatever thing you want to invest in. That is how to think business. Because I've been there. I will just empty my account to buy a lens, buy a camera. And the people will be misleading you. I'm telling you, yeah, follow your passion. Do whatever it takes. Empty your account. Buy the Don't let them lie to you. You have to build your business. You have to be strategic. You have to think like a CEO. You know, you analyze it. Okay, this, this goes to this. This goes to this. So, oh, I want to buy this equipment now, but I'm not going to buy it now. I'll wait another three to four months. Let me manage the equipment I have so that the remaining money, I can spend it on these other areas of my business. You know, that is how to think business. You know, that is how to think. So, organizational structure is important. So, you have the production department, you have the marketing there, you have the customer service and sales. You know, customer service and sales. Even if you are still the one handling your customer service, you are the one that talks to your customer. Don't act like it's you. You know, you can say hello, hello. When they call your office line, I hope you guys separate. Don't use your personal line as your office line, oh guys. Please. If you can't, go and buy a two-sim phone and put different SIM inside. If you cannot afford two phones, you get a two-sim phone and put different SIM inside. So when they call your office line, you pick it and like, hello, uh, you're welcome to um, Ishola Photography. Why did I use Ishola's? <laughs> you know, you're, you're welcome to Magic Photography. How may I be of help today? Automatically, they feel they are talking to a customer service officer. It gives your company vibe. It makes them look at your brand as bigger, even though you are picking the call from your bedroom. You know, they perceive you as bigger than you are. You know, and when you pick the call, you know, you, hello, you're welcome to clinical. Okay, okay, all right. I'll send you my package, you know, and you take it from there. And one major tip I'll give you is that try to be different. Don't act like the crowd. Clients reach out to you that they want to know your price. You just send them price. You don't even ask questions. You don't even relate with the client, you know. One thing I do in my business is I don't let clients, I don't send prices to clients like that. We talk to them. We try to call them. We try to have a conversation with them. We try to build rapport with them. We try to build a connection with them. Oh, tell me about your wedding. Who's your event planner? Which all are you using? Oh, yeah, oh that's nice. Oh, this is your date. We are even open for it. Oh, oh that's really nice. That, this is what we do in my business. Just to make the client fall in love with us. 
So that we book us. You think booking is just by posting on Instagram? We don't have a design on how you can win clients, how you can sell your brand to, to clients, how you can sell your work. Don't think because your picture is fine, clients will just be flocking around you and be worshipping you. No. You have to design strategies on how you can win them over to your side. Photography is a very competitive space. The industry is growing. So you have to understand that, that if you are still growing your business, you need to work on your customer service and your sales. Even though you don't have the money to hire a professional customer service person and it's still you, work on how you talk to people. How confident are you? How do you speak? You know, how well do you talk to people? How well can you play with them, make them smile? Don't forget that you are selling an experience. You are a photographer, maybe weddings or portrait or whatever type of photography you do. You are selling an experience. Oh, thank you for reaching out to us. I'm so glad you called us. You know, we have amazing market-friendly packages for you. I'm going to send it to you in a minute, but can you tell me a bit about your wedding? You know, I want to know more about what you are planning. Where is it holding? Do you have bridal train? Do you have event planner? Or do you have an hotel already? Oh, that's a nice hotel. I've worked there before, and even if you have not worked there before. You know, I have worked there before. It's a nice, very pretty uh, place. It's a good, and even they say a hotel that is not good. But uh, that hotel, I'm not really a fan of that place. Have you considered this other hotel? It's affordable and it's a nice place that you can use for your wedding. You're already relating with the customer even before they book you. Before you know it, the customer has fallen in love with you and they will not want to go anywhere else. Just have to think business. Don't just think when you, the moment you create fine picture. That's why I used to say every time, don't be so addicted to, you want to learn the touching, you want to learn this. That's the only thing. No, that is just makes up half of your business. The remaining is all this marketing, sales, promotion, and all that. Do you guys understand? So try to make sure you structure your business. Have a production department, have a sales department, have a marketing department. For example, your sales department, which is the customer service, you have to invest in all the, this, this department I'm talking about. How do you invest in your sales department? If you don't have the money to employ a customer service officer, you don't have the money to, and you are the one doing it yourself, go and learn customer service yourself. You can learn it online. Go to YouTube if you don't have the money. How to be a better customer service officer, how to talk to potential clients, how to sell photography, how to be a better salesman. You are improving yourself. So when customers reach out to your business and they, you pick the call or you are chatting with them, you know how to talk to them in a professional way that will make them look at you and, like, and say, ah, this brand is a correct brand. It's not like all these other brands. Don't just talk to your customer as if you are talking to somebody you met on the street. That's you investing in a department. So when I talk about building a photography business, I'm not only talking about the fact that you must employ, employ everybody. No. If you have the money to employ, please do. I have a customer service officer. I have a salesperson. I have marketing person. You know, I have a production department. I have literally everything. I have copywriter. I have videographer. I have, you know, but I grew to it. That's not why I started my business. I started it on my own and I was running most of this on my own. Small, small. I started employing one, two, three, four, five, six before I now got to where I am today. You know, but before you get to where you can afford to employ a lot of people, you have to be doing those things yourself. Marketing department, customer service and sales, production department. Then the last two is accounting and legal. These ones, you don't need to employ people, but try to make sure you have a contract for your business. You have to be giving your client contract. It's very important. You have to give your client contract uh, when they want to book you. You have to give them invoice when they want to book you. It's very important. If you don't know how to do it, go, go online and look for free invoicing apps. You have a lot of them. Just go online, search for free invoice app. On it, it will help you. You will get different free platforms online that you can use to design invoices, you know, that you can use for your business. It's very, very important, you know. So, let me carry on. Now, you need to have financial goals. Now, this part is very, very important. You know, I learned this and it literally changed my life. You know, it changed my life. You know, I'm in a place where I'm very stable with my business. Why? Because my mentor taught me to have financial goals now this is what i mean for financial goals where i'm not talking about financial goals about how you spend your money with in your no that's not what i'm saying what i mean is you have to have a target every year for your business specifically financial targets that is how to run a business because in the past the mistake i made in my journey was that I don't even know the year that is better than the last. What I mean is, some year, I don't even know the year that I made money and the year that I did not make money because I don't have record. I don't, I'm sure a lot of you are there right now. You don't have record to your business. If I ask you that, how many weddings have you shot in your career? You probably don't know. If I ask you that, how much did you make in 2022 as a photographer? You don't even know the exact amount because when the money was just entering, just entering, just spending it, just entering, just spending it. So you don't even know if you are making money or not. So if somebody comes to you and says, ah, you are making money, you'll be like, ah, no, I'm not making money. Because your money is not even planned for. You don't have targets. Now, this is what I mean. You have to be setting financial targets every year. For example, you can say, okay, my financial target for the year is 
um for example um two million naira. let me just make it reasonable my financial target for the year is two million naira. i want to make two million two million naira this year from my wedding photography you cannot break it down say, okay for me to make two million naira, how many weddings do i need to book to make two million naira? or how many photo shoots or what depending on the area you specialize do i need to book to make two million naira? so let's take weddings for example okay if i book 10 weddings at 200,000 naira, I will make 2 million naira. That's how to do business. So you will know if you are eating target or not. Even if you don't even eat the target, you know that, okay, this is where you, you were losing it and next year you will add more energy. You know? So, okay, for me to make, make 2 million naira, I need 10 weddings at 200,000 naira. 200,000 times 10 is 2 million. So you said to yourself, okay, in the next 12 months, one way or the other, I have to book 10 weddings at 200,000 naira. That is it. That's the magic. So you already know. So when you book one wedding, you already know, okay, you need nine more. Wow. When you book five weddings, okay, you know, you need 15 more. So there might be some times when maybe you have already eat, maybe like instead of booking 10 weddings, you're already at seven weddings. You need three weddings. And somebody comes to you and say they don't have the 200,000 that you charge. They have 150,000. And you look at your target and you're like, hmm. Okay, if I take this one fifty thousand, it's going to make me get closer to my target of two hundred. Sorry, my target of two million for the year. You take it. That is how to think business. You take it. Okay, this will help me up, get close to my target. And there will be times that you will even be lucky to find clients that can afford more than two hundred thousand. Maybe they pay you two fifty thousand. They pay you three hundred thousand. You know, based on the packages you offer them. You know, and you get higher before you know it. You have hit your your target. And even if you don't even hit the target of two million, at least. You know that there's a process. It gives you direction. So even if you book eight weddings and you are still in March or April or nine or May and you have already booked like six weddings, you know that okay, uh -uh, at least I've passed half of my target for the year and I still have another seven months to go. I'm sure people will still come book me. At least even if I don't eat ten weddings this year, at least I will eat seven or eight. For you know, you've made your two million. Do you guys see the importance of target setting? You need to set financial targets. So you don't just enter the year and just be all confused. You know, you don't even know what to do. You just, job just comes, you just spend the money, job comes, spend the money. End of the year, you look back at the year. You don't even know how much you made. You don't know how much you spent. You don't, you don't even, because the money doesn't not even have shape or form. You know? You cannot operate your business that way. So you need to have financial targets. Set financial targets, guys. Set financial targets for your business. It's very, very important that you set financial targets for your business. So that it will give you direction while you are growing your business. You will not be all confused, you know, and all that. You, you won't be all confused and all that, you know. So have yearly financial goals, you know. Then you need to work on your client experience. Don't forget that your number one market has... Your number one marketer is not your social media page. Your number one marketer is your client. The better your clients feel, the better for your business. The more happy they feel, the more happy your business. Because the moment you start satisfying your client and they're happy with what you do, not just be beautiful. When I say client experience, I'm not talking about your photos should be nice. Because all of us get it wrong. A lot of photographers are so proud these days because they are good at what they do. They've improved their craft. They are professionals. They don't treat customers the right way. They feel jobs will keep coming. Oh, I will shock you. Don't make that mistake. Your clients are your priority. Treat them with love. Treat them with care. Be tender with them. I know vendors that I've met three, four years ago that they were very big in the industry. Not just photographers, vendors generally. They were big then. They, they, they don't take nonsense. They'll be telling you they don't take shit from anybody, from any client. They don't take any out. If any client talks to them, any out, they talk to the clients back. All of them, they, most of them have vanished today. They are not relevant. They are struggling. Business doesn't grow that way. Believe me. Me to have made mistakes like that in the past. When you feel like because your work is good, people will be worshipping you. No. So you need to invest in client experience. How do you want to make them feel? What are the things you will give them? Do you send gifts to your client? Do you send birthday messages to your client? You know, do you send anniversary messages to your client? You know, how do you create a going concern for your client even after the wedding? How do you keep the relationship going with your client in a way that when they want to give birth, they call you for the naming? These are things you need to start, strategies you need to start employing. Okay, what are the things I can do after I've delivered the job that will make the clients want to still call me and work with me after they are, maybe they're having their wedding anniversary or they want to do family shoot later. You send them gifts, send them messages, birthday messages, happy new month messages, happy new year, Christmas, Easter, 
uh, even if it's Muslim holidays, whatever thing it is, my happy Mother's Day. Send it to the female clients. They'll be happy. Ah, this guy's thinking of me on Mother's Day. You know, these are little things you need to employ in your business to make your business wonderful. And finally, re always reinvest into your business. This is my final point. Always reinvest, you know, into your business. Reinvest. Spend money on your business. Don't spend money on only camera. Believe me, guys. Don't spend your money on only lens, on only uh, uh, Instagram or uh, learning retouching. No. Spend your money on the business, your marketing, your sales, your customer service. Invest. If you cannot employ it, go and learn it yourself. Pay somebody to teach you customer service. Pay somebody to teach you sales. Pay somebody to teach you marketing. If you cannot pay somebody, learn it online. You know, invest in your business. Grow your business. So the more money you make your business, the more you should go back. By the first five years of your business, you are supposed to be pouring the money back into the business. Except for your necessities. Money you need to use to feed yourself and pay your bills. After that, you need to be pouring. This is not the time to be saying you want to be saving money. Pour it back into the business. Grow it. It's like a plant. You have to water it. You have to water it. And you have to keep growing it. You know? You have to water it. You have to water it. And keep, and keep growing it. Okay. So uh, um, that's all for tonight. Let me check out some of the questions we have here. As we round up, this financial goes if it's from profit or money you charge from your clients. No, your financial goes is from the actual money, from your revenue. Revenue is the total money you charge. So, for example, if your financial goal is two million, like I said earlier, you know, and you book ten weddings to eat two million, your profit for the year can't be two million. Your profit for the year will probably be when I say profit, I mean the money that ends up in your pocket as your own personal money might be probably eight hundred thousand or one million, depending. It depends on how you spend your money you get so your profit cannot be the total revenue because expenses will go to the business there'll be money that go to marketing sales and many other things sure you understand so so it, can, it cannot be from the profit to be from the money you charge from your client how do you usually divide your payments to serve each department it depends it depends on how you make money i cannot tell you how but my own is divide it the best way it works for you but make sure you put money in your marketing and your sales your customer service and also your production the more money your marketing needs, uh, your marketing department wants, the more your equipment department wants. So don't think it's equipment that is the only thing you need to invest in. So it's up to you to decide the percentage you want to share based on how it works for you. You know? Okay. So we'll get the video. Okay. Comes to you. Set for okay. Development. Okay. So I think I've answered most of the questions that I have here. So, like, we already know if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to send us a message on the WhatsApp group, you know, uh, where we tend to answer most of your questions. So, I hope you guys have learned something tonight. You know, I hope you guys wrote things down and you've learned something. And as I go, I want you guys to go to my Instagram, Olushe underscore magic, and follow me there. Because I'm going to be dropping a lot of business tips there from next week. So follow me, Olushe underscore magic on Instagram. And don't forget to follow Real Magic Academy also on Instagram. And if you've not purchased my course on lighting, please do. It's very affordable. Just 30,000 naira. Go to Real Magic Academy, click on the link. You're going to find it there. You can purchase my course. If you want to down, buy my lots, my preset is amazing. You guys have seen my work and I'm sure you guys can testify. And for those of people that have bought the preset, I'm sure you guys are loving it. You're enjoying it because we'll be getting a lot of positive reviews from all this year. So guys, don't forget to buy this product and follow our channels i hope you guys learned one or two tonight you know i hope you you guys learned one or two tonight okay let me quickly answer these questions before i go how to write an invoice to customers check google for free invoicing app with the photography just check free invoicing app if you don't find it send me a dm or a magic academy so i can probably help you find it i'm sure it's plenty you will probably find it do you have to pay yourself if you are serving in all department? If you can, yes, pay yourself. That's the way business should be run. If you can, please pay yourself. But if you can't, at least invest in those departments. You know, if you can't. The equipment department is under what? Please. It's under production. Equipment department is under production. Effects TV. Sir, does Wave account app work in Nigeria? Yes. Wave is good. It's one of... In fact, check out Wave. I just don't know if it carries Naira currency, but Wave is very good if you can use Wave. You know, you guys, those of you that are hearing this, just search for Wave on Instagram. Uh, sorry, on Google. On Google. So that's my major concern about them. The clients are not really patient enough for that. They are just eager to see your price list. You have to be wise. Is is how you approach it, Khalil Mohammed. Is how you approach them that determine the way they approach you. Believe me. You know, can a photographer devise a means for paying himself? Yes, you can. You can set a percentage for yourself. For every wedding, twenty percent goes to your pocket. 
and the remaining 80 percent goes back into the business as simple as that you know or if it's 30 percent you want to go to your pocket it depends on what works for you you know so uh for people talking about the whatsapp group please check the link in my bio or send us a dm on instagram to join the group you know okay okay so i think i have to go now we have a lot of questions um but i can't answer it all sad you did not tell us the range you want to, to charge clients for their i cannot tell you how much to charge your client to <laughs> i cannot tell you but what i'll tell you is for the low level people that are channeling their energy towards the low level market where there's a lot of money if you want to channel it towards the low level charge from 200 to 400 like maybe 150 200k 300k and that's for the low level maybe to 400k that place you see a lot of crowd there you can make a lot of money as long as you have ants you can book more than one job self and be shooting different jobs at the same time if you want to go to the average level start from 500 you know 500 700 850 you know that's like average level 700 the most common price of average level is like 650 700 you know you get a lot of average level if that's your price but if you want to go high end you go 1.5 two million care about that's for the high-end client that's like the range you know that i can give you guys when it comes to the different levels so can you help us with sponsored ad contact there's no contact for sponsored ad now just go to your facebook go to google and search for ad manager create your own ad manager link it to your instagram account and create your heart from there's very all this is just search for it on google it will it will be it's very direct you know it will help you so thank you so much guys um thank you for joining me tonight i've exceeded my time i hope you guys learned a lot i hope you guys learned one or two tonight and i'm sure i dished out a lot of value and i really appreciate that you guys were here to bear with me so like i said don't forget to follow olushe magic on instagram olushe underscore magic on instagram and also um rare magic academy on instagram then don't forget to join the whatsapp group so you can be part of our coming webinars our coming updates you know and our coming workshops so thank you so much guys for joining in i love you all Thank you for the support. Thank you for always being here. 